Arjunas. I see Don. <laughs>
Hello, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Hi, Terry. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. I think we're good to go here. If you'd like to go ahead, uh, welcome our audience at home and call our meeting to order. I think that we can get underway. Yes, thank you to our audience at home. This is our annual celebration of all things Anton Art Center. And we've got lots of exciting things to share with you. So thanks for being with us. Let me call the meeting to order and have Phil provide proof that we gave notice of the meeting. Thank you, Terry. Our proof of meeting notice actually was in our eblast emails and on our website and social media. Uh, our invitations to the meeting this year were exclusively electronic. Great. All right, so let's move on and approve the meeting minutes from last March, actually two Marches ago, as we had to uh, cancel last March's annual meeting. So the March 19, 2019 annual meeting minutes. I think Catherine- Don't move. I'll make them, I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so let's start with officers' reports. And um, as president, I guess I get the honors of calling on myself first. So um, what can I say? COVID, 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 all day, every day, COVID. So, um, Right about the time of the last annual meeting was when Don was handing off the gavel to me. And I had already talked to Phil and I had big plans that we were going to do some strategic planning. Our plan is old and we're going to have a new one. And yeah, within a couple of weeks, we had a new one. All right. Um, it was called COVID. And we just started flying by the seat of our pants and reinventing ourselves every single day, um, figuring out, you know, when to close, how to close, how to cancel classes, how to put people to work at home so they'd be safe working from home, um, how to turn everything we've done into a, a virtual 
version of exhibits and classes and sad art days and art parties and holiday markets and all that while keeping abreast of what was going on with the pandemic and how to keep people safe and how to introduce new protocols so that when people did need to come to the building, they could do that in a safe manner. Um, so I have to give a lot of credit to Phil and his staff. Um, they rolled up their sleeves. They rolled with the punches. They tried new things. They figured out new technologies. Um, they found money so that we could do all those fun things and try all those new virtual programs. And um, Phil's going to go into more detail about how we transitioned into all of the virtual world and how we're going to start to come back a little bit from that. Um, so I don't want to step on his report, but there are there are a couple things that I really want to highlight. And one is through the last year, we really saw the love that people have for the Anton Art Center, whether it was the staff, you know, doing double duty and working from home, whether it was people that still wanted to come to the building and volunteer, people that were willing to take our classes online or come to a virtual sad art day or a virtual meet the artists or studio visit. Um, our donors, our instructors, everybody um, just really pulled together. And, and Phil's really going to go into detail about how we became a leader in the virtual aspect of running an arts organization. And I'll let him go into those details. But um, I want to thank everyone who helped us make it through the last year. And then I want to highlight one other thing that I think is a big accomplishment for the Arts Center and sets us apart as a leader, and that is um, after we all saw the news footage over the summer of the George Floyd incident and the national reaction to that, um, Phil and I discussed it and we said, you know, it's part of our mission that we're going to be inclusive in be diverse and provide equity and access in everything we do. And now's the time that we really have to, we really have to walk that walk. And we really have to acknowledge that in the arts, people of color have been historically underrepresented and we have to do something about that. We have to fix that. So Phil pulled together a council, um, an idea council for inclusion and diversity and equity and ac access. And they started meeting in November. We've already seen a, a new pipeline of people that are volunteering. They're getting on the education committee and the exhibition committee and the board committees. And, you know, we have a new pool of candidates for board service and volunteers and instructors and um, from that is going to come some really interesting community outreach, some interesting meetings, some um, public art projects that I think we should all be very proud of because the Anton is definitely a leader in this area, despite its size, and even when larger organizations have not yet taken that commitment to heart. So thank you to everyone who supported that. Thank you, Phil for thinking of that and pulling that together and really getting that rolling. I think we're, we're gonna just have so many benefits from that. So that's my report. Um, Catherine, as secretary. Yeah, it's a very short secretary report. Um, as you said, as Terry mentioned, our last annual meeting um, was canceled due to COVID. Um, and so our previous meeting was um, March, 2019, and the meeting um, minutes are attached to the meeting packet and they were approved and filed. And um, one of the things that I think, again, we as an organization have done very well at um, moving to virtual, even with our committee meetings, um, all of our, many, many of our committee meetings and board meetings have been held throughout, right from the get-go, throughout, COVID um, via Zoom. 
And we've um, found them to be tremendously productive, very, very productive um, across the board. And we anticipate that moving forward. So um, that's a very, very brief uh, secretary's report, but um, that's all I have. Okay, fair enough. Mark, our treasurer. There you go. Go. Um, okay, so I am only going to be talking about uh, the first quarter of our current fiscal year. And as Terry has mentioned many a times, COVID, 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 right? And uh, I just want to say that Phil and his staff did an incredible job. Um, you know, ultimately our cash balances remain strong at $270,000, which is actually up $50,000. Uh, prior to the year end, uh, that is a result of a grant we received. Um, payables are down uh, about $10,000. We only owe about 5,000 payables, which is good. Uh, we did receive uh, PPP money in the first round last year of $38,441. I am pleased to report that Bill and the staff got that forgiven in January. And then we went out in February and got a second round of PPP money in the same amount of 38,441. So those two um, loans have really helped to uh, uh, helped us to manage through the operating side of our, uh, our organization. Uh, on the income side, uh, total income was about $149,000 for the quarter which was approximately $45,000 less than we had originally budgeted. Um, there are three reasons for that shortfall. Uh, class cancellations amounted to about 15,000. Uh, the Christmas market, as I think we all could imagine, was not as successful as we had hoped. Um, we were short about 47,000 uh, where we thought we were going to be. Now, to look at the positive side of that, in the second quarter, we we're going to pay out less commissions uh, because we had less sales. So we will see a, a bump from our budget in the second quarter because of that. And then we had uh, expected about 11,000 from a private foundation donation and uh, we did not receive that. Um, as far as the positives go, um, we did receive about $5,000 in the annual appeal and we received the Macomb County COVID relief grants totaling 31,000. Current operations resulted in expenses savings of about 37, uh, 36,000 compared to budget. Um, there were a lot of small items that took uh, impact on that, but the big items were a reduction in contractual services of about 14,000. PR and advertising was down about 4,000. Class instructions were down 5,000 and labor costs were down 4,000. So um, I am proud to actually report that uh, for the quarter, we uh, had a net profit of 45,000, which was only about 2,000 off of what we had budgeted. So overall, Phil and his staff have continued to do an incredible job during a very difficult situation. Um, and um, we do have to remain diligent in our budgeting and our operations, which we have done. And uh, we will continue to monitor the budget and make adjustments throughout the year. Uh, but I like where we're at at this point. Um, lastly, I'll just point out that um, overall for the budget year, and Phil and, and, and Mary and myself are going to continue to massage that but we are budgeting an $85,000 loss for this fiscal year. Um, that hole is not going to be as big as it would appear. Uh, 39,000 of that is depreciation, which is a non-cash item. Um, we did collect the last payment of the Manugian from the Manugian Foundation, which was 25,000, um, which takes the deficit down to 21,000. And then, as I mentioned, we just received another PPP loan of 38,000. So in theory sake, we've already plugged that hole. Now, um, we obviously have budgeted an art party this year, which with, uh, with vaccinations and whatnot, I am really optimistic that we will be able to do that and we will be able to achieve um, the level of income that we expect from that, or, uh, 
from that event. So with that being said, I guess I'll open it up to any questions. Perfect, I love it. <laughs> thank you, Mark. All thank, right, you. thank you. All right, we're gonna shift gears now to reports from the board committees. Sorry, Terry. Yeah. Just before we move on, um, can we give John Gideon, our auditor, a moment to speak? Oh, of course. Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes. John, please. Can you even hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, actually, Mark did a pretty good job of, even though he was talking about the quarter, uh, you know, we go through and do the audit, which we did was through September of 20. And the bottom line is we've got an unqualified report, but um, that's, you know, I don't want to say it's a given, uh, but with the great job that Mary has done over the years and, and Phil is, you know, helping her, we always feel pretty comfortable coming in and doing the audit. The real concern is, is always looking forward and, um, and, very happy to hear that you applied and uh, had it forgiven the PPP uh, draw one. And I'm sure you'll get the same thing with draw two forgiven. And now with um, the recent uh, funding that's going on now, one of the major items or one of the items that they're including uh, they're targeting uh, art centers. And so it will be interesting to see what grants are available that will help fund you guys going forward. Um, because uh, things are coming back and they will come back, but they won't be coming back that rapidly. And so the fact that you have the potential of getting some additional funds is, is I think, great news. So that, that is uh, kind of sums it up from the audit standpoint. So again, just summing it up, if you look at the audit report, it's unqualified, which is exactly what you want. And you seem like you're really making an effort to make things work, which is great. And we now have some potential to get some more funds. So between everything, I think we're going in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you, John. Sorry about moving on without you getting your report in. I apologize. Okay. No, no problem. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the board committee reports and governance is up first. So I'll take it to Don. Okay. Um, uh, the Governance Committee is in the process of reviewing uh, the bylaws. Um, we're uh, uh, eliminating uh, the term members and how uh, individuals participate and support uh, the art center. So we're in the process of, and periodically every, every organization should do this and take a look at their, their bylaws and make sure that they, are, that they reflect uh, current situations. So we're gonna uh, be updating all references to the term member, um, addressing the board of trustees terms when they end. And then uh, we wanna ensure that uh, it represents uh, and reflects the mission, vision and goals of, of the Arts Center. So uh, we have an ad hoc committee that's going to be meeting uh, in the beginning of April to start that process. Uh, secondly, what we're looking to do is um, uh, trustee recruitment. And uh, uh, last year we added uh, four uh, trustees, uh, Kelly Lavati, uh, Jeannie Shabath Lewis, uh, Patricia Baker, and Juanita uh, Braska. And um, we're, we have probably four, three to four uh, uh, openings right now. So we have a, a list of potential uh, trustees or uh, people that we might approach. Uh, the, we've created an ad hoc committee. Uh, they're going to review that list, uh, rec recommend some additions or potential additions to the list, and then develop a short list of individuals 
uh, to recommend to the governance committee. And uh, we'll be meeting at the end of this month uh, to begin that, that process. Um, like all organizations, uh, we're in the process of put it, putting together a, a form to do a, a valuation of the, of the director. Um, it's a, a standard process of all organizations. Um, it hasn't been done for uh, probably two years. So we're in the process of reviewing all of that, putting a form together and then developing that, that process so that we can move forward with that. And then we also have a board evaluation. Um, uh, the members were asked to evaluate and we've collected that information and we will be putting that together and then uh, discussing that with uh, the trustees in uh, future meetings. So with that, I think that ends my report. All right, thank you, Don. Um, we're gonna do internal affairs next. Just, sorry, one quick note before we move on. I keep interrupting. No, that's good. That, five, that last uh, trustee, Don, that we added is uh, San Juanita Barajas. Just wanted to make sure that was corrected. I apologize for that. I'm, I couldn't read my scribbling. So. <laughs> um, so I'm the chair of the Internal Affairs Committee, and we are tasked with the financial aspects of the Art Center and the physical building and everything that comes under those two titles. So as you can imagine, with a year like we had in 2020, um, we spent a lot of time going through the financials. The budget was uh, completely, almost completely out, out the window as we had to pivot and get money from different sources and um, still find ways to provide the services that we wanted. So we spent a lot of time monitoring the grants that, that Phil and his staff could get, the PPP loans, um, what the effect was on our revenue and trying to take a long range look at things um, to recover from a year like we had in 2020. Um, we obviously spent a lot of our time talking about, you know, how to close the building safely, how to start reopening the building safely, um, doing a, a partial holiday market in person and leaving some of it online, how to reopen for the exhibits that we currently have, which is such a pleasure to come to the Art Center again, and there's art on the walls on the first floor, there's a student show and on the second floor, a really impressive exhibit from the Cotton family. So if you haven't come back to see us in person, please do, because we worked really hard to postpone those until it was safe and now get those in place and have our doors open so people can see those. Um, as I already discussed, we launched the Idea Council and got that rolling and started to get new faces in the pipeline to volunteer with us and contribute and make suggestions of how we can be more inclusive and have a more diverse audience so that it mirrors the audience in the community and, and the diversity in our community. Um, we created a code of ethics. We needed one for a grant we applied for. So um, the Internal Affairs Committee finalized that and the board approved it this year. And then we reinvigorated both our exhibition committee with some new members. Um, and luckily we've got great board members that just keep taking on more responsibility. So Alyssa has agreed to chair that committee and um, of course Stephanie will, from the staff will be on it and Michael, I don't think Michael's with us tonight, Michael Deitch has agreed to chair the education committee which Peggy will serve on and we've also brought in some other new members on those committees to kind of give them, give them some new life, give them a kickstart and uh, let them go and, and do great things. So that's what the internal affairs committee has been up to for the last year and uh, more of that to follow. The Idea Council, of course, will continue. We'll continue to watch closely our financials and a full reopening and, and return to classes in, in person and such. So that's what Internal Affairs has been up to. Um, Catherine, External Affairs Committee report. 
Great. We too have had a very busy um, year uh, focusing really on um, reviewing our bylaws. Again, took the opportunity to slow down a little bit and for a moment at the beginning of the year and review our bylaws to ensure that we are um, actually doing um, what our bylaws say we should be doing and um, that those, those things that we're doing are actually meeting the needs of the organization. So a couple of things we realized along the way is that the staff is doing a fantastic job on marketing um, on their own. And the committee had, had been sort of designed to oversee some of the marketing initiatives. Um, so while we still provide guidance and support, we don't really need to focus our attention on that. Um, we really recognized a need to look at our membership um, program, um, really, um, look at our volunteer program and, and sort of um, refine that a little bit. And most importantly, really focus on development. As a result, we um, recognize that most of what we do now will be focusing on um, more like institutional advancement, things that are building relationships long-term to provide sustainability for the organization. Um, that would be, you know, um, Creating, we created a development plan this year for the first time. Um, and that development plan has, um, has strategies and tactics and measurable goals. And um, we're pretty, we're very happy about that. Um, I'll, I'll back up to that and talk a little bit more in a second. Um, Michael Deitch, who's in charge of the volunteer committee, he uh, reviewed the volunteer handbook um, with his committee and um, updated it and published that at the end of last year. And so that was a, a great advance. And Alyssa Diebold, the chair of the membership um, area for the external relations committee did a lot of um, work in benchmarking other um, organizations and their, their membership programs. Um, so we brought all that information in and the benchmarks and also looked at what our organization needs. And we recognized that our current membership program was, um, was not necessarily meeting the needs of the organization at the time. Um, and we felt there was an opportunity for, for us to um, provide greater access and opportunity than our current membership program was enabling. Their, our current membership program created some barriers that we thought might um, restrict people who might want to be involved with the center from becoming involved with the center. So we decided to uh, eliminate that program for the um, this coming year and, um, and look at other ways to deepen relationships with our um, people that are engaged with us through classes um, and different people, bringing different people into the organization in different ways. So that is going to be something that we're going to continue working on over the coming year, um, building relationships long-term and deep deepening those relationships, um, broadening and deepening relationships with the organization through things like, um, you know, um, engagement with other types of organizations and um, a greater PR um, sort of outward looking PR strategy, um, as well as our development plan. Our development plan included um, launching our first ever uh, monthly giving program as part of our individual giving campaign. We'll be doing that um, this, this month. We're very excited about it. It provides an opportunity for people to be able to support us in ways that fit their financial situation. So by providing opportunities for people to give, you know, as little as $5 a month, they're able to be a part of our organization and support the work that we're doing. And um, we thought that was a really important way to um, meet all of our um, community in where they are. So uh, we're excited about that program and you'll be hearing more about that as we launch it um, with some um, media and some different, um, our, our campaign gets launched. Um, and that's all I have at the moment. Is there anything, any questions there you might have or did I miss anything, Phil? Thank you, Catherine. You're welcome. Um, Phil, your report's up next, so unmute yourself.
All right. There we go. Hi, everybody. Uh, my report, as you're probably aware, if you're familiar with us at all, my report is likely to take twice as long as everybody else's half tonight. Um, so I'll, I'll try and, and move right through it here. One year ago, COVID-19 changed everything that we knew about operating an arts organization. In March of 2020, we closed to the public and halted our planned programs, including the annual meeting that was just a couple of days after that closure became mandated by the state. Thanks to generous supporters and careful financial management in the preceding years, we were able to keep staff employed and quickly shift our efforts to virtual programs. While many other arts organizations struggled to keep folks employed and continue working to meet their mission, we had an opportunity to fill a gap in arts provision in our community, and as it turned out, for, art for artists around the world. Within a week of closing our doors to the public, we launched an online art exhibit to stay engaged with artists that evolved into our worldwide online juried art show, which received an astounding 1,524 entries from 518 artists representing 30 US states and 44 countries. <laughs> Around that time, we also began producing follow along at home instructional videos to encourage creative expression and share opportunities to work through this pandemic as a community of artists and creatives. We continued moving programming online as the year went on, hosting a number of virtual exhibits and a host of online workshops and events. We honed our skills in video production and ramped up our online presence while many other arts organizations had to focus on financial solvency. We produced a virtual super sad art day program last June, which allowed folks at home to participate in arts activities via pre-recorded and live instructional videos while continuing regular, our regular sad art day programming in our new virtual format. First State Bank continues to present our Sad Art Day programming, and we are proud to receive that support. Even our beloved Art Party fundraiser last year became the virtual Art Party at Home. Though we weren't able to gather for the typical festivities, we were still able to bring together supporters virtually with restaurants, performances, and even an online silent auction. In July, we real I'm sorry, we launched our rebranded art market, formerly the gift shop, with a new online store, a significant effort that pales against the launch of our annual now online holiday market later in the year. As with our other programming during this time, our website and social media presence played a crucial role in helping us communicate with our audiences about upcoming virtual events and opportunities. In the past year, we've established a social media ambassadors group, instituted regular marketing meetings with staff, and hired a new marketing agency to help us increase our virtual visibility and presence. As, so <clears throat> as soon as state guidelines allowed, we restarted small in-person classes with an array of COVID-19 precautions, social distancing, enhanced cleaning and disinfection protocols, plastic barriers to separate workspaces, reduced class sizes, and of course, face masks. Speaking of face masks, we were privileged to partner with Henry Ford Macomb Hospital and Macomb County for the Mask Up Macomb poster contest last fall. This encouraged local artists to submit compelling poster designs encouraging people to wear masks. Entries were accepted from adult and youth artists and the winning adult poster was printed and distributed around Macomb County. All of our adult and youth winning designs are available as a digital download on our webpage. As the pandemic wore on, it became clear that the Anton Art Center had become a model for virtual programming and in how we addressed a return to in-person programming. Even now, we continue to go above and beyond to ensure that our visitors feel safe and comfortable. We use building-wide cleaning protocols, health screenings at the door, continued capacity restrictions, and mask requirements. Earlier in 2020, the movement for Black Lives brought attention to injustices that were faced by Black people and other people of color. Following the murder of George Floyd, the Anton Art Center issued a statement in response, intended to articulate our support of the Black community members and supporters that we know and love. We knew that issuing a statement would not be enough, 
and we renewed our commitment to inclusivity, diversity, equity, and access by establishing a new IDEA Council. Now co-chaired by Nafisa Simonette and Troy Mitchell, the Council began meeting in November and is preparing to launch a year-long series of community conversations focused on underrepresentation in the arts. The first community conversation will be scheduled for June 2021 and will culminate, culminate with the creation of a significant public art project here in Mount Clemens. Through the IDEA Council, we also hope, hope to leverage support from Black community members and other people of color to advise us in program development, operations, community relations, and more as we learn our way toward being a more equitable and welcoming organization. This council has already begun to serve an important role as a pipeline to generate greater engagement from stakeholder groups currently underrepresented within the Anton Art Center's own ranks, board members, committee participants, instructors, and artists. There are a few key reasons that we were able to achieve so much during one of the most challenging times any of us has ever faced. Our staff, Volunteers, board, and supporters have demonstrated significant dedication to the Anton Art Center. By being flexible and looking for innovative ways to engage our community and deliver our services, we have excelled at maintaining visibility and programming to support our mission. Our initial cash position, thanks to the generosity of our supporters and careful financial management, this position allowed us to continue programming without pause for the entirety of the last year. Funding that became available to support organizations during this time of need, both through traditional grant funding mechanisms, but also as a result of federal stimulus funding to support small businesses, including two PPP loans, grant funding from the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, Culture Source, and the Community Foundation for Southeast Michigan, as well as funds made available through the CARES Act via Macomb County. And finally, Staff's willingness to try things that are new, different, and difficult, and board support that allowed staff the freedom to experiment with innovative approaches to programming. Even now, as the pandemic seems poised to subside, we recognize that the arts landscape and nonprofit se sector are undeniably changed. We have developed new audiences online who we cannot leave behind. We have existing audiences who participated in our in-person programs pre-COVID. Our supporters and our audiences have grown, and our new challenge is to ensure that we are continuing to engage folks on their terms, on their platforms. The art sector will never be the same again, but our commitment to our community and to artists young and old remains as strong as it has ever been. It is my hope that this new way of being and serving our community will not only increase our effectiveness in meeting our mission, but allow new opportunities to enrich and inspire people of all ages through the arts. Cue applause. Sorry, all of you folks at home, you just get to hear my cheesy jokes and I don't get to hear you groan at them. Um. <laughs> what, a, what a perk, huh? Yes. Um, before I yield the floor, um, We're gonna, we're gonna run through a little bit of a slideshow here um, that Peggy has painstakingly prepared for us. And I'm going to tell you about a couple of our current exhibits. All right, I think Peggy's working on getting that lined up here. Um, as Peggy's working to um, get the slides running for us, I'd like to share that um, what you see behind me, saw behind me, is the annual Macomb County Secondary Student Show. Um, this year, we were able to host the exhibit. Um, like some other exhibits and student shows in particular, uh, this show received about half as many entries as we would have received in a typical year. That's not, um, that's, I mean, that's unfortunate uh, based on circumstance, but that still amounted to about 750 total entries to this exhibit. Um, we juried it down to, I think, about 250 total entries that were accepted to the show, and we are displaying the award-winning works here in person, but the, uh, the entirety of accepted art is available as a virtual exhibit on our website. Um, the award winners here include the first, second, and third place uh, awardees from each grade level, 7 through 12, as well as a best 
portfolio for senior students and a um, best of show for a single artwork that was uh, awarded. In our second floor gallery, the Pettiprin Community Gallery, oh, there's the postcard from last year's student show, the one that regrettably um, got canceled halfway through due to the COVID pandemic. Um, in our second floor community gallery, the Pettiprin Community Gallery, we are currently hosting an exhibit, an exhibit called Visions of American Life, a selection from the Nancy and Sean Cotton Collection of American Artwork. That exhibit is uh, the culmination of a great amount of work and a fantastic partnership with the Detroit Institute of Arts. Um, and we've been working towards improving our gallery spaces for a few years now in order to host this exhibit. Um, there are 13 artworks from American artists created between 1850 and 1940. Uh, and it is a fantastic representation of art that was being produced in that time frame. Those uh, works are avail available to be seen in person. And I encourage everybody, if you're comfortable with it, to stop on in between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m., Tuesdays through Saturdays, to see these exhibits uh, firsthand. Unfortunately, we're not able to show the entirety of the Visions exhibit as a virtual show um, that is only available to be seen in person. Um, however, it is still a, a fantastic exhibit if you're able to make it. Um, the Visions exhibit is on display until April the 12th, and our Macomb County Secondary Student Show is on display until April the 13th. What um, you're seeing on screen now is some of the activities and exhibits that we were able to host um, last year, primarily virtually. Our summer camp at home, that was a virtual program. Our first ever art and meditation workshop, which was uh, fantastically attended. Our virtual art party at home, which um, while it was a lot of fun and a great learning experience, I'm hopeful that we never have to do that again. Um, people clearly obviously prefer the party. Uh, <laughs> so I'd love that photo of me in that one. Um, as well, our holiday market, clearly we'll be continuing that with some online presence. However, um, that will again, be a more robust in-person experience this year. Here you see some slides related to the Visions of American Life exhibit uh, that are on display. It's on display here now. Um, and upcoming here is our Sad Art Day programming, which we are still producing as virtual programming uh, for the time being. Uh, the first few of these slides were programs that we had completed in the last year, uh, 2020, at the height of the pandemic. Um, and the later slides you'll see here uh, will be programming that spills over into 2021. We are continuing to plan programming as primarily virtual in nature uh, for the next at least couple of months. I believe uh, it is likely that our Super Sad Art Day program in this coming June will be a hybrid virtual with some limited in-person experiences available. I'm looking back at all of these slides and remembering all of these great programs we had done. Um, anything that we've done as a virtual program, nearly everything that we've done as a virtual program can be viewed still on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel where we've been collecting all of these things over the last year into a really robust arts and instructional library for you to view. Including that great quilt program. Oh, that was a fantastic one. Anybody who likes quilting. I'm sure you all are uh, particularly enjoying my little side commentary here, right? <laughs> I see nobody at home can see it, but I'm seeing board members giggle at my, uh, <laughs> my comments. Uh, all right. I'm unsure how many more slides we have here. Oh, that might've been it. I talked almost enough. Um, thank you, Peggy, for putting all of that together for us. I do appreciate that. Thank you, Peggy. Um, Phil, do you want to move right into some special recognitions? Yes, that's a fantastic idea. Thank you, Terry. Mm -hmm. um, each year, the Anton Art Center awards our Volunteer of the Year. We need to catch up on a couple of awards from last year um, that we did not get to award because the meeting got canceled. So I'm going to go ahead and start with those. Um, in 2019, we were set to award two volunteers, one Volunteer of the Year and one recipient of the Thelma Ulrich Lifetime Achievement Award. Drum roll, please. Um, our 2020 Volunteer of the Year for all of their hard work and dedication to helping us um, 
do a lot of small jobs around here, including something that was not a small job, building out closet space in the lower level classroom area to enable a greater amount of storage um, and more efficient storage. I'd like to give this 2020 Volunteer of the Year Award to Marty Borkowski. Congratulations, Marty. Let's see if you can kind of see that there. Beautiful engraved Anton Art Center plate. Sorry, it's, oh, that's, it's a little hard to see. The plate itself is actually courtesy of our own trustee, Alyssa Dybold. Thank you, Alyssa, for creating these beautiful plates. Congratulations, Marty. I'll get that over to you as soon as I have a chance to see you. Um, our 2020 Thelma Ulrich Lifetime Achievement Award uh, goes to a volunteer who's been volunteering here for a very, very long time, uh, who has dedicated time on our patch and paint crew and on our holiday market committee and assisted in our gift shop and art market. Um, that volunteer is Louise Borkowski. Louise is going to receive this lovely plaque with a tile of the Anton Art Center. Sorry, I can't tell if it's focusing for everybody on the other end of this or not. Um, Louise has really uh, been quite a help to us um, over the years, uh, lending a hand wherever it's needed in a perfectly willing fashion. So we appreciate everything that you've done for us, Louise and Marty. Uh, and I look forward to giving you these in person. And finally, one uh, award, we're only doing a volunteer of the year award for 2021. And this award goes to somebody who uh, has gone far above and beyond um, everything, with everything that's happened in the past year, we had a lot of shifting gears that needed to happen here. And um, the perhaps some of the biggest gears that needed to be shifted were with our art market and then our holiday market. Getting that entire operation up and online was no small feat. And it is my great pleasure to acknowledge our art market coordinator, Nancy Garcia, as the 2021 Volunteer of the Year. So uh, congratulations, Nancy, and thank you for everything that you do to make sure that we are a successful organization. And that's what I got. I see my camera keeps going in and out of focus. I'm sorry, folks. Well, thank you, Phil, and thank you to the volunteers that we honored, and actually to all of our volunteers from from uh, from every angle that help us make make our commitment to our community. Um, so, for other business, uh, we wanted to give a chance to the board members. If you are so inclined, if you want to make any comments, we've all been through a really wild year. Um, if so, if you wouldn't mind raising your hand so Peggy can call on people to try to keep, keep some order and us not stepping on each other while we're trying to talk. But whoever wants to add anything, now is your chance. Hello, uh, this is Alyssa. Um, I'm one of the board members and I live in East Point. And I just wanted to echo a lot of the thoughts that have been brought up by everyone else tonight. Um, so I think we as board members, but we also as, you know, members of this larger Anton Art Center community really have a lot to be proud of in the past two years, um, since we didn't meet in 2020, um, between COVID and the racial rec reckoning, all of that's really impacted each and every one of us and all of the members of our community differently. And I know for me personally, I'm very, very proud to serve on a board with all of you and serve you know, with all of these members from all over the county to take COVID as seriously as we did. You know, we were still able to provide so much content to our volunteers, to our patrons, to the young folks, to um, more mature folks and just activities and programming throughout the entire pandemic. So I'm very, very proud of that. Um, we did a lot of work virtually and a lot of video editing, and we all really had to learn how to do all of that on our own. So I'm really, really impressed with us on that. And then additionally, with all of the racial, rec racial reckoning that happened in 2021, I could not be more proud 
of us going beyond writing a statement and sending an email and um, doing a couple social media posts. We're really acting on it and we're inviting everyone to the table. So I just want to share how proud I am, like truly, truly, truly proud that we're, we took everything so seriously and handled everything with so much care, respect, and really with a lot of grace. So I'm very excited for the future for Anton Art Center with all of our new plans and ideas and doing things virtually and in person and really working on the workload on all of our plates. Um, I'm excited that we are moving, moving forward together as a greater arts community and continue to build on our position here in Macomb County. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alyssa. Um, anyone else? Going once, going twice. All right. Well, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn our annual meeting. Judy? Support? Don? OK. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you guys. Thanks to all our volunteers, our board, our committee members, to everyone who loves the Anton Art Center and devotes their time to it. A good meeting. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Judy. All right. <laughs>